Hi, my name is Nick Jeffries of New Projects, West London's number one design and build contractor, and you're watching New Weekly, episode 16. So we need to do the loft conversion, a glass box extension out the rear, double, double story, and a full refurb. I think the property, when it's finished, is gonna be worth eight million quid. So the, the construction depth is thinner, it can be built in all weathers, and it goes up quicker, but also, once you get to roof level, you don't have to, you can load the roof up while you're doing the outside, so it takes all the walls and the windows off the critical path. This is some of the world's most expensive real estate. Pound per square foot, it could go up to three and a half, four thousand, five thousand pounds a square foot for a penthouse. That brings the bill cost up to 3.5 million pounds. So asking price, 15 million. What do you think? So it's Monday morning and it is coming up to 12 o'clock. So we had two new inquiries come in over the weekend. One being in Richmond, a guy called Jazz phoned up and literally it was Saturday and I picked up the phone and I think he was shocked that I picked up a phone on a Saturday. And um, he's basically bought a beautiful house on Priory Road in Richmond, and it is semi-detached, Edwardian style property, 141 years old, needs completely remodeling. He wants a basement under the footprint, a kitchen extension, a loft conversion, and a pod room. So on Wednesday, I've arranged for Will Nickel, Will O'Brien, the architect, Freddie, the interior designer, and myself, we're gonna go around there as a team to meet the client, to have a look at this fantastic opportunity. So I'm very positive about this one. He sounds really upbeat. He sounds like a good fan of new, and um, let's see what happens on Wednesday. And then this one here, um, this one is on St. John's Avenue in Putney. Again, big property, must be three and a half thousand square foot. The lady has lived here for 35 years. She bought it for 300 grand back then, so that was an awful lot of money, when the interest rate, she said, was 14%. Now, she has done some modernization over the last five years, but there's a garage to the side of the property and she's had a drawing created of a, um, basically demolishing the existing garage and she wants a single story house with a basement underneath. Now, it's a nice little scheme Basically, that's, that's the house here. This was the garage. So she wants to demolish the garage and she wants to build this little house here. And it's got a basement underneath. But apparently, because there's a covenant on the land to say the local council won't allow to build a property on any garden, they're going to reject it. Well, Hang on a sec, this, this garage has been standing on this location for probably 40, 50 years. How is that possible? So we need a planning consultant, a planning expert to tackle this one. So I've introduced her to our good old friend, Alistair Downey. He's the expert in um, uh, planning and architecture and legal um, policies in this area so let him tackle that so that's two really good opportunities over the weekend uh, this week 
this afternoon, Will is heading over to our new opportunity in Montpellier Street, Knightsbridge, which is just opposite Harrods. Now this one is a fantastic project. It's already had the basement done, but the client has come to new because he's kicked the old contractors off and he wants us to give him a price to finish it. So we need to do the loft conversion, a glass box extension out the rear, double, double story, and a full refurb. I think the property when it's finished is gonna be worth eight million quid. So it's a big project, high, very high, uh, high levels of, of, of fit out. You know, I think the joinery, the joinery specification, which is gone out to 10 to four, is coming in at 400 grand just for the joinery. So that's that project. Uh, what else we got coming in this week? There's a specialist coming in tomorrow for uh, SIPS. Now SIPS is kind of a, um, like a modular kind of construction. And uh, Will Nickel, I don't know too much about it to be fair, but Will is an expert in modular and SIPS construction. And we want to speak to the client in Chigwell, you know, the 10,000 square foot house. They are gonna exchange this week and we wanna try and get that construction in SIPS or modular. So there's a conversation to be had tomorrow with Will and the uh, specialist. And I said, I'll get back to the client early part of this week. So that's what's happening uh, today. So let's catch up later on. This is for our client in Chigwell, yeah. right? I spoke to her yesterday. They're exchanging and completing this week. They've got had a budget estimate for um, normal construction, but they're keen to find out ways to value engineer it down or even to shorter the construction. Yeah, the so program, shorten the construction program. Well, the, the way the way so. this compares is it compares it probably be comparable in price, if not less. But the spec is higher. So when you're looking at things like during project management of a building, you're looking at time, cost, and quality. So generally, if you if you Increase the quality, you increase the time or the cost, mm -hmm. as you know. If you inch, inch, and then, so one, if you if you move one thing, it normally impacts on the other. The thing with, with the way we build, it, we increase in the spec because we're increasing the the sustainability of the building. So if we if we build this way, uh, and we can get the walls down to 0 0.13, which brings down the overall running cost of the building mm -hmm. over time. Mm. And, give it, and it, if you build it the way we would suggest, you can get an EPC rating of A. An EPC rating of A, the energy performance of the mm. building great A rated increases the value of the home as well. Mm. So not only does does it make SIPS construction speed it up, it can help you in the build cost, but also in the running costs and increase the value of mm. the property as well. So it's a win, 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 yeah. win, win. The big thing I think you have missed out as well is um, it's an offsite. Yeah. Okay. So it comes. Well, okay. flat pack comes in a lorry. Yeah. Flat pack. It's not weather dependent. Not weather. Well so you can. We have, we have got pictures of us putting this up in the snow. I built. A, we built a house in the snow. But the speed is so, a lot. Is, is yeah. It's twice as quick, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the, the different. The difference is with this building as well. A hybrid building is against the, any other construction. Block traditional brickwork and blockwork is slow, and the walls are thicker. Mm. And so you need a lot of insulation in there, and the, the construction depth is thicker, a lot thicker. So you're losing square feet, and as you said in London, that's important. Mm. So the, the construction depth is thinner, it can be built in all weathers, and it goes up quicker. But also, once you get to roof level, you don't have to, you can load the roof up while you're doing the outside. So it takes all the walls and the windows off the critical path. Mm. So when you get to roof level, you can be roofing this but at the same time. time Mm -hmm. At the same time, you're bringing the outside rain screen up, mm -hmm. so you're in a win-win so program. The facade, so the facade of building, say it's like either render, brick, uh, cladding system, uh, anything, the facade of that building comes off the critical path. Yeah. That can be put up any time. Yeah. It's like when we built in Wentworth, we built concrete frame, yeah. only because that's what the client wanted. Yeah. But this supersedes. Yeah. Now, 
Some as well. It's got uh, planning for traditional build and building control drawings are already designed. Do the drawings change? No, what we've done, because generally what would happen with you come to us with the planning drawing, so we, it, we can work with an architect, yeah. so what you really want to know is the best, we're doing this all the time, we, work, we get the planning drawings from the architect and we say hold on a minute, yeah. stop, we'll come up with a concept, and a concept might not be, because you might get down stands, so you might need a big beam because you might have an open mm. plan. So the architect said, and they don't like that one beam in there, we've got a down stand, can we put two? So you, two beams are going in there, so you've got no down stand. So there's, there's, we, we, we turn through on the concept, mm. so just to get the aesthetics right. But, so from when we've got the conceptual, then we've, we've got a price, because we know what we're building. Mm. And then we go away, we do an approval drawing. The approval drawing goes to the architect who checks it dimensionally. Once the dimensions are right, we go into detailed fabrication drawings mm. and then procurement and making yeah. it. And at the same time, our drawings are fed into the architectural drawings who, who submit those for building control. Yeah. Have so you got your own architects in-house as well? No, 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 we work with architects, but we have got we have got some great architects we work yeah. with. Yeah, some sustainable. We have got access to our own architects, but so not in-house. Do, do you think, would most architects have worked with this system before, or not really? You'd be surprised. Especially in London. You'd be surprised how many. Would have? You'd be surprised how many haven't. No, that's what no. I'm saying. What yeah. happens with this? You have to remember, this is it's 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 a win-win because it's fast build, it's eco-friendly, but not only that, it gives you a, 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 it's reduced construction debt and gives you a U value. If, if you build with this and add-on solutions we've got, yeah. you get a U value of 0.13, 0.0.15 0 0.15 and under is classed as passive. That's what it's classed exactly, though. So yeah. you're classing as this, it's almost well, it is passive mm. fabric first construction. Mm. So you're not building a passive house, but you're building and if you take par parts of it out of there, it's passive. Yeah. It's 0.13. Yeah. I mean, we can increase that U value. We've got quite a few passive house new build opportunities over the last three or four years. There was a lovely one in Wimbledon. Yeah. But he came to us uh, from an architect. Obviously, we've never done a passive house before. Listen, there's, 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 there's no reason why you should go passive. There's no reason. No. And I will explain to you. Yeah. We've got other reasons. Passive means you have to orientate it to a certain... It gives you constraints. It, you're constrained to help with it, really. Yeah. It's an architect's nightmare. It becomes box set and constrained. With we, What we've got with our, with our renewable heating company relieves you of these constraints, which we can, we can talk about later. Yeah. So we've got a way of... Well, this is a fabric first approach, but we've got yeah. a way of heating the building independently, not yeah. through the glazing. Yeah. These, not, are, not passive these, are, these are concept drawings we did on Butter Steep Rise, right? And people think about high end properties and worried yeah. about this being a cheaper alternative. The, the chap who was buying this was buying this for a lot of money. It's a place to sort of sit their old Berkshire uh, golf club. Yeah. And this is what we designed as, as a concept, okay? So these are concept drawings that Andy did. We got the planning drawings, and these are yeah. the concept drawings. What's the size of this house? It was eight thousand, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, eight thousand square foot. The, the other thing with this is, when we design it, we design it to give you room in the roof. All our systems are designed to, unless it's well, with a flat roof, you've got room in the roof. But a lot of these buildings don't have a room in the roof. So we, so we work, we design, we, we do the concept of the roof first, and then we work down. Mm -hmm. So the load paths are going down through the building. So we. Because you need a room in the roof. On the fine, generally, if you build traditionally, all your walls have got to go where they go because that's the way it stands mm -hmm. up. So you've you constrained like all the walls have got to be built. Mm -hmm. We can make it building this this modern. It's called modern methods of construction. We can put we can open the buildings mm -hmm. out so we've got limited load bearing walls, which then allows you to walk through mm -hmm. walk the course after the event when we've gone and put partitions in. So you might want to move a partition a metre that way, this way. If you're building traditionally, you can't move them. And not involve a structural engineer? No, because it's the, you've built the structure. Yeah. Yeah. So, we, oh, right. so we're, we're, we're designing one in Canada now. We did it yesterday for the architect. The builders want to build a basement and then they want to build a building on top of it, but they don't want constraint because they want to be able to go around with some spray paint and say, mark, out. mark it out after that. So mm. we're opening up all the spaces so you can walk the course in there, so you can move a wall three foot that way, yeah. two foot that way. Yeah. So I call it the sort of, uh, uh, it's in the car park thing, because it's like building a car park where you have your structural stability yeah. in there. And then afterwards you infill Just with- the walls in where you want. Yeah. But you've got to, you've got, when you're doing things like that, you've got to, des got to design. Design where the windows are going to go, Design where the penetration is going to go through the building for your services. These are the important parts. 
that you've got to design out straight away. Mm -hmm. But all building work and all construction work and all design, architecture then, should all be done at, at pre-construction. Mm -hmm. And then everything else should be easy after that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people just rush into it. A lot of people go, right, well, we've got some pine drawn, just get some architects to do it. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, you're happy building the property and it doesn't work. Yeah. So it's happened. It also, yeah, it also, when we're designing it, we can minimise some foundation strips and minimise foundations. Mm -hmm. So sending the loads to the edges helps you minimise foundation mm -hmm. design. But they're also the way we do it. When we're designing this, we're also con all the time considering cold bridging, which is a major factor in sustainable building now. The building regs in June. So we look at how can we mitigate cold bridging coming through. So cold bridging is just basically if you had a wall like that, you've got a lump of steel here or something mm -hmm. to carry a load, you've got to stop the cold coming from the outside to inside so you don't get any what's called inter interstitial condensation. Mm -hmm. It's your dew point. Mm -hmm. So when cold meets warm, you get a dew point and it's stopping that. Mm -hmm. So we, we design, we've got all standard details for where floors meet junctions and everything. So we can get rid of all, mm -hmm. more, the majority of cold bridging we can eradicate. Mm -hmm. So you, you've got to consider all this, and that's yeah. what architects at the moment, not they don't struggle with it, because most architects like, they enjoy the conceptual stuff, mm. but when it comes to doing the engineering and, and opening up the building mm. and considering, let's free up mm. the space, let's consider cold bridging, that's yeah. where we come in and help them really. I think it's, um, obviously architects in London, they don't do many new builds, do they? No. So it's just getting, especially we work with a couple of architects in-house who need to get their heads around this for sort of mansards or maybe extensions. <laughs> On a mansard roof, we've done quite a lot. A mansard roof extension and everything. What you'll generally do is they'll either go up in brickwork and have to put a lot of steelwork in there and etc. etc. Yeah. So we try these become these are obviously this will mitigate the need for steel work because mm. these become load bearing but they, when they're together they act like a truss mm. so when it's, it acts like a big truss so it spreads the load yeah. across, mm. across the areas mm. you've got to generally you've got to look at what's in there and engineer it mm. you've got to marry it in mm. but the other beauty of that is it goes really quick mm. you're not like there for days and days if you're trying to put a roof on an existing building this this does quick there it goes up well we've got we've got a few uh uh, it, mansard problems, we can try and flip them over to this method straight away, couldn't we? Really? Yeah, yeah. Right, it's Wednesday and it is 1 pm already. So this morning, me, Will, Will O'Brien, the architect, Freddie, the interior designer, all met at a house in Richmond. And this was a semi-detached, three and a half thousand square foot, unmodernized, beautiful property. So the client wants a basement under the rear of the house. It's already got a cellar which has been converted. So they want half the basement. They want the kitchen extension updated because that was done 15 years ago. They want the mansard and pod room added to the rear and a full refurbishment. So the guy seems really positive about using new. Obviously it needs to go through planning and design, but he's looking to start work in the summer. So fingers crossed, we can get this guy to fall in love with new, the team, and we can win the job. Other news, well, we have had a project came in from a architect in Fitzrovia late yesterday. It's a, an apartment, I think a two bedroom apartment, unmodernized. They want some internal reconfiguring and a complete remodel and fit out. Will next door, he's gonna be tackling that one with the architect as soon as they jump on the phone. But what I'm thinking about today, maybe you can all jump in a car with me. We're gonna head over to, I think, Chelsea, Belgravia, and South Kensington to see the different types of properties in the different areas. So it's gonna be quite interesting. They're gonna range from a terrace house worth three million quid up to a terrace house worth six or seven million quid and uh, 
monstrous terrace houses in um, uh, Belgravia, maybe 20 million quid. So let's go and have a look to see what we can find. <laughs> So we're on the Fulham Road in Chelsea and I'm just going to take you down uh, one of the side roads to Dove House Street where we've built a few lovely uh, properties going back over the last five years. One being uh, a 1500 square foot basement, a loft conversion and a full refurb. So let's have a little drive by, see what it's looking like from the curbside now. and. Um, we can have a little guess how much it's worth. So, this one behind us, 22 Tight Street. Again, we did this one maybe five years ago. It was completely unmodernized. We got planning for a basement under the footprint and that basement was 1500 square feet. We also did a full refurb to a very high specification. The bill cost here in the end was almost 2.5 million pounds. And I think it sold for nine million in the end. So nine million quid. What could you buy for nine million pound where you lived? Crazy. So I thought we'd just pull over and show you this project here. This one was the basement project, which collapsed last year. So what a nightmare. I actually know the company who was doing it. It wasn't actually their fault. It was the property next door's fault, but their property collapsed. So look, terraced of houses and one missing. Look at all the temporary works holding the buildings up so that's what happens when things go wrong So now we are in Belgravia, Eaton Place. This is some of the world's most expensive real estate. Pound per square foot, it could go up to three and a half, four thousand, five thousand pounds a square foot for a penthouse. What do you think of these buildings? It's like going back two, three hundred years, isn't it? Amazing, amazing buildings. Look at them, one, two, three, four, five, six stories. Just look at the, but look at this um, on the corner here, the amount of scaffolding to do that. Can you imagine the bill cost? 10 million quid bill cost? Just to do the refurb? Unbelievable. Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I suspect
So it's Thursday and um, I just thought I'd jump down with uh, Zoltan to give you an update on some of our live projects or projects which are going to be starting next week. So we use a system, basic system, I've got it on, it's called Trello, it's easy. Everyone's got access to it. You can use it on your phones, on your desktop. And basically it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's like a, it's like a, a spreadsheet with images and you can cat touch on it and it opens it up and it, you can put information and when anyone comments, it gives the other t group uh, an alert. So basically, um, going from the start, we got Chesham Road in Kensington, West Kensington. The client wants us to go around there next week because he's struggling to find a place to move out to and we're supposed to be setting the site up in February. So that is a terraced house, full refurb, no construction, just sort of uh, remodeling what he's got already. And then we got uh, Halliwell, which is a loft conversion in Brixton. That's not gonna be starting till May. A little bit too small, but we're gonna be cracking on with that one. I think we're gonna be passing it on to Billy, one of our trusted subcontractors. Um, Alistair Downey, he's working on one in St. John's Avenue for us. Beautiful house. The lady's been there for 30 years. She wants to remodel the ground floor and where the garage is to the side of the property, they want to demo that and rebuild a single story house with a basement. So he's popping around there next week for that one. Uh, also, Will went to um, Maple Cottage in the Cotswolds yesterday where we're doing an extension for Alistair Downey's sister and her husband. Uh, and because that one is a long way away, it's very difficult to manage and we're having a little bit of issues with the subbies, you know, maybe not being so proactive. And But the team we've got on there now seems to be really good and the images which I got sent yesterday, there's massive progress. The site is clean, tidy, any um, construction issues there was has now been dealt with. So that is good. Um, where else we get? St. John Lyons House on the Thames. That is going very well. The boys have been on there three weeks today and um, the client has just signed off her first variation account. She now wants to replace all the flooring across the whole flat and um, replace some electrical lighting and AV and also we've created a little bit more extra space in her ensuite, i.e. it's a purpose-built apartment in a, in a new development but where they've tried to square the walls off to make the rooms symmetrical um, they could have created a bit more square footage because the, the ply, if we take the walls down, we could go right to the boundary of the building. So we've created another, I don't know, half a metre in the bathrooms. So the client is very happy about that. So that's all been signed off. Um, Stafford Mansions. So Stafford Mansions is this one I'm going to talk about in a minute. This is the eight, 900 square foot apartment. It's already been stripped out. We went around there last week to have a look. Um, the drawings are now completed. The scope of works is done and now we're just gonna be working on the pricing again because there's gonna be lots of changes. The client is supplying all the second fix items, but now we're talking about underfloor heating, uh, new electrical layouts, so the price is gonna go up slightly. Um, right, there's a meeting taking place up there at the moment with the contractor for North End Road. So we are building a little penthouse on top of a block of apartments in Fulham. That's starting next week. Only a small job, but literally, it literally it's on the main road. It's gonna be scaffolding, tin roof up and over, and we're gonna have a lovely new sign on it. So everyone driving up the street is gonna say, oh, that's another one for new. So great tactical location. And then we've got Beaufort Street in Chelsea. The keys are meant to be dropped off this week and we can start in March. So this is the 1500 square foot apartment, uh, lower ground and ground. Uh, we're doing extension and full refurb. 
only up to first, second fix, second, no, sorry, second fix items the client's supplying. Uh, that scope of works hasn't been sent over yet, so we haven't priced the second fix up yet. Um, what else is there? And, well, the one which we haven't really talked about at the moment, it is in prime, prime, prime Knightsbridge. I guess it's 2,500 square feet. It's gonna be a full refurb to the highest specification. And we are working very hard to win this one. I can't really say the address. I can't tell you any images. I can't show you anything because it's not done yet and we wanna win it. Game changer. Haven't really got any more updates on Holland Park. The client's gone a little bit quiet. I do try and WhatsApp and make a call to say hi, keep the message really upbeat and friendly. We want to win that one. And um, yeah, so there's, there's a few bubbling around. So this one, what we got here. So this is what uh, Will O'Brien sent over the architect. So he's our architect who's been speaking to the client of Stafford Mansions. So there's a few changes. The demolition uh, plan is here. Um, there's one internal wall has got to come down, but this has got to be all sent over to the management company, the new layouts. All the new layouts, because uh, this needs to get signed off and approved before we start taking down walls and putting new steels in, because it's in like a 150 year old mansion block opposite Buckingham Palace. So they're gonna be slightly strict, aren't they? So this uh, tells you, you know, sort of the bathroom layouts. So we've got the new bathroom layouts, what kind of flooring. Um, what's this one? Where all the underfloor heating's going. Looks like it's everywhere. We haven't priced for that. I know the client's supplying the underfloor heating, so we will be installing it. Oh, let's turn that off. Oh no. What's this? Um, this one is the electrical lighting plan. So originally we only priced to uh, replace the spots, but now it's replacing all the electrical wiring and cabling and sockets everywhere. Um, so that's the existing floor plans and proposed. This is the scope of works. So this is like the scope of works where uh, Will's work with the client about the flooring, um, you know, what materials, what tiles, what was going for farrow and ball paint. So that's going to be expensive or similar. Again, tells you the sockets, herringbone flooring throughout. Oh, he seems to have an, an IKEA sink in there. Strange. What else? Electrical layout for the underfloor heating, the pricing for that so the, the client can supply that. And that is the temporary works for the structural calculations for the wall as well. So this is all extra, because when we priced up originally, all we had was a sketch. So now we go back to the drawing board and we price up correctly to make sure there's no gray areas. We haven't underpriced it. You know, we get it signed off for the client, which is gonna be quite quick because we're gonna get back in there on Monday. So that's that. Um, let's have a catch up later on and uh, I'll speak to you all soon. Right, so back in popular demand, someone's asked me to go on Right Move again to have a little look at what's on the market today and to see how much these properties cost and what potentially was the bill cost. So let's go and jump in again, straight into Fulham, I think, where we are. And um, let's see what the most expensive property is in Fulham on the market today. All right, okay. So just round the corner from the office, 
we've got Broom House Lane, which backs onto um, backs onto Hurlingham Park. So Hurlingham Park is where all the polo players uh, uh, have that event. event. Um, what's it called? Polo in the Park, once a year. Quite a good event. So let's have a look at some images. Look at that monster. So I remember this property when it was being constructed. It was a new build house uh, and they've done a basement right under the footprint. So underneath here, you've got a massive basement. Look at that, mm, perfect. So I reckon this was done, finished three years ago. Look at that, look at this island, look at that. That must be, and this, look at the detail of the wood. Amazing. Spiral staircase, swimming pool in the bath, in the basement. You got walk on glass here with the light wells, steam room, jacuzzi hot tub, everything, bar, look at that, cinema room. All right, let's have a look. So, asking price, 15 million pounds. 15 million quid. So that means, and the square footage is 10,000 square feet. At nine, just near, coming up to 10,000. 10,000 square feet. So that means they are asking 1,500 pounds a square foot for this property. Um, looking at the level of fit out and the build, new build, a little bit easier to do the basement, fit out, lovely joinery everywhere lovely flooring I reckon they're going to be easily spending 300 300 to 350 pounds a square foot to do the build and the fit out I reckon it'll take about two years to complete that brings the bill cost up to 3.5 million pounds 3.5 mil so asking price, 15 million. What do you think? I would definitely live there. because it's, it's To be fair, it, it, the house is in a great location, but just opposite, you've got loads of council. Do you know where this is? Yeah. Zoltan? Yeah. Just literally over there. Just over there yeah. So you've got a fantastic house, and the house just around the corner is, is beautiful as well. But on the opposite side of the road, you've got all council. So that ain't gonna sell too easily. So that is that one in Fulham. Now let's, let's take a look at another one, shall we? Let's jump into Mayfair. Super prime, high-end Mayfair. Right, here we go. Bang. Upper Grosvenor Street in Mayfair. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, right. Asking price, 54 million pounds. Probably built 150 years ago. Look at it. Unbelievable. Look at the floor, beautiful, beautiful floor. Everything amazing, high ceilings, original, Grey two listed details everywhere, mix of modern contemporary lighting. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Look at that. Let's have a look at this. Let me have a look at the floor plans. Look at the basement. So the basement goes underneath the whole property. Look, you've got a full size swimming pool. Home theatre, cinema room, gym. So the square footage here is 14,000 square feet. So that's probably 14 times bigger than the average house in, in the UK. 54 million quid, prime, prime Mayfair. So 
14,000 square feet, that they are asking 3,800 pounds a square foot. 3,800 pounds a square foot. So almost three times as much as the first house we saw in Fulham. And that was expensive at 1,500 pounds a square foot. Um, location here. So we've got the location. We got Park, there's Park Lane here. Grosvenor Hotel, Hyde Park. So resale value, uh, 54 mil. I reckon the build cost, they would have have to sink in at least 500 pounds a square foot, easily. 500 quid a square foot to do the build. So 500 pounds a square foot times that by 14,000 is seven million pounds build. Seven million pounds build plus VAT. Wow. That's probably one of the most expensive properties in the city at the moment on the market. And I reckon it's gonna take at least three to four years to do the project. So who lives in a place like this? I reckon the place has just been done up for an investment. Probably some Russian or Arab guy maybe comes here two weeks a year, do a bit of shopping in Harrods, brings his family over, brings his uh, whole team, supercars, and it's like it's just that the, the, they probably have an army of um, cleaners and household servants just taking care of it for, for no one to live in. So that's two beautiful houses one in Fulham and one in Mayfair. If money was no object, where would you live? Where would you live? So for me, I would rather live in the country. Fresh air, 54 million quid. That's a castle. It's more of a castle. That's, a, that's, that's almost, that's probably uh, a, a whole a location in Portsmouth where I come from, maybe 10 streets. Incredible. There you go. So that's our insight into what's on the market today in Fulham and Mayfair. We'll do this again next week. That's another week coming to a close. I've just got back from Stafford Mansions. Everything seems to be moving along smoothly. The boys are upstairs in a meeting discussing North End Road. But thank you for watching this week and don't forget to subscribe, like and share. See you soon.